my venus is debilitated should i get married or should i not should i stay unmarried should i remain like a celibate or should i go into a relationship but not marry or should i not even go into a relationship or should i go into marriage and get divorced and is that my karma mm -hmm. interesting so these are some questions which uh, people ask me in the comments so they think that if venus is debilitated then one of the two is true either better they stay unmarried or even if they marry they will have a divorce so let's see if this is true and is this true for everybody because venus will be in virgo for one month of a year almost so does it mean that so many millions of people uh, who have venus in virgo will be like this now it can happen sometimes but it doesn't have to happen always right so we shall see when this can happen and when you do not have to worry if you have a debilitated venus all right so if you're new then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation regarding your marriage or relationships then you can go to my website down below in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so what is venus venus represents love romance compatible relationships long-term relationships happiness in married life conjugal life conjugal bliss <laughs> and in terms of external arenas it can be uh, creativity cosmetics fashion designing arts media and youtube and all these things also so venus gets debilitated in the sign of virgo because virgo is a very selfish sign it is the sign of calculations why do we calculate because we think of ourselves <laughs> now everybody has a virgo in the horoscope so everybody is uh, selfish to some extent if the horoscope is good uh, virgo doesn't behave uh, selfishly <laughs> it behaves in a, a self-centric manner you know there's a bit of difference Bo of course both are selfishness ultimately but uh, self-centric means uh, you think when it is required to think about you and selfish means you only think about yourself <laughs> so virgo can be self-centric sometimes or can be totally selfish but anyways that formula doesn't work very well in relationships because uh, in relationships you need to experience love and what is love love is when you try to make the other person happy that is love actually nowadays uh, in the modern uh, youtube community i always see people talking about you know self love it's an illusion there's no self love <laughs> it's self care taking care of yourself you know eating nice sleeping on time being a good person staying with the right people that's self care that's not self love for god's sake it's such a stupid idea self love because love has to be directed to another person okay you can take care of yourself your body your mind and physique but you cannot love yourself that's not possible you have to love another person all right <laughs> of course they say you must love yourself to love others but you have to take care of yourself you cannot love yourself that's not possible <laughs> so when you love somebody when you are uh, what is love modern idea of love is uh, you scratch my back i scratch your back it's like a uh, give and take relation basically there's no love in the modern world it is love is there but it's selfish it is there till that extent uh, the partner is fulfilling my needs the moment my partner stops fulfilling my needs i don't love that person anymore i don't give a damn that person is living or the person is dead all right that's how modern love is that is why modern relationships don't sustain marriages are breaking apart divorce rates are going up and there's complete mayhem in Kaliuga. That's the reason, actually. Now, suppose you have a Venus in debility. Doesn't mean that you are a criminal in relationships. What I'm telling is, you might have these tendencies from your past lives. But suppose your dashas in your upcoming uh, life, your Mahadashas, are indicating the 2nd, 7th, and 11th, these houses then you do not have to worry about a debilitated venus much okay you need to do some remedies for venus which uh, 
I have made like 15, uh, yeah, yes, uh, 15 remedies. <laughs> so you can watch that uh, video. I'll put it up here and they can help you to improve your Venus actually. But the thing is, if your um, upcoming dashas are indicating good houses of marriage, then this debilitated Venus will not be able to uh, show its effects in uh, your dashas. Okay? So that means if suppose you have a, let's take an ideal scenario, your Saturn is in second house, your Mercury is in seventh house, and you have Ketu in eleventh, or interchangeably, all these three are exchanging places. Exchanging places means not in Parivartan Yoga. Imagine they are sitting either in 2nd, 7th and 11th. Okay? Then if you are running Saturn Mahadasha at the age of 25, uh, or not even 25, even 20, okay? then till 39 you will run Saturn. You know? Then 17 years Mercury, then 7 years Ketu. So these will indicate good houses of mar marriage. Okay? These are houses which sustain marriage. All the trines, okay? 5 and 9. Then uh, this Venus, uh, which is in debility, uh, you don't have to worry about this. Now, the challenge will come if it indicate if your dashas are somehow indicating uh, by planetary lordships or by planetary placement, the sixth house or the tenth house, which means suppose Saturn is in sixth in the bhav chart, disclaimer, and Mercury is in the tenth house, then that's a, then this can be a very big challenge if you're running Saturn Mahadasha and Mercury Mahadasha. Okay. And I'm always talking in the context of Mahadasha, okay? Because now I know you will write in the comments, Oh, you are lying. I have Saturn in sixth. You know, I got married. My married life is good. But were you running the Dasha of Saturn? All right, that's the question. When were you running? Was it an Antara Dasha or Mahadasha? What it was? So, the Mahadasha Lord is very important when it comes to marriage, okay? And uh, therefore, if you have these placements, then uh, you might have to work a bit more on being selfless within a relationship actually. Okay? Now many times in Kali Yuga, people tell me, oh, you should not be very selfless in relationships. You know, you get used and you get abused, you get tortured, you know, uh, bad things happen to you, you get cheated. Well, uh, that's true, but that doesn't mean that somebody else has done something wrong. So we also become like them, okay? So, we cannot be happy in relationships unless uh, we are selfless to whichever extent we can. So just because somebody did something wrong to us, if you think that in the next relationship, we uh, keep ourselves you know, away and we do not become selfless, we do not become vulnerable, you won't be happy. So it's like you're single, you know, there's no relationship there. All right. So don't punish yourself and don't punish somebody else for some for the mistakes of other people. If somebody did something wrong to you in a relationship, that was a part of your karma. You should accept that and you should move on with that lesson. Move on doesn't mean you forget it. Don't pretend artificially, I'm fine, you know, nothing happened to me. It's great, life's great. No, it's not like this. Whatever suffering is there in your karma, in context of relationships, that will be there. Okay? You cannot avoid it. But what I'm telling is, accept that. If you want to cry, then cry. If you feel that you are suffering, then accept that fact. Take to spirituality. Read the Bhagavad Gita. Read Srimad Bhagavatam. Meet the spiritual people in the weekends. Understand that ultimately, whoever the person is, that person cannot fulfill all my expectations. And to some extent, with whoever I stay, I will be frustrated and my expectations won't be met to a large extent indeed. You can ask people who are married or who are in relationships. They will tell you how much are they happy or satisfied with their spouse. Nobody will tell you more than 50%. Uh, <laughs> you won't find any human being saying, I'm totally happy with my husband or with my wife. There's not a single human being I've found, right? So we should, uh, we should understand that first of all, we should have self-care, not self-love, self-care. We should take care of ourselves, our life. We should have a good life. Then we should decide to go and get married to somebody or we should enter into a relationship. Uh, and only then we can share our happiness, okay? So this is how you know uh, how to understand if a debilitated Venus will give you uh, so-called astrological trouble, as people say, you know, this crooked Venus ruined my married life. <laughs> so if your Venus is very crooked, as... Uh, many people say, you know, uh, my Shani is terrible, you know, Rahu is horrible, Venus is crooked. <laughs> All right, so um, 
you can judge for yourself what's there in your Mahadashas and I hope you will get good answers, okay? And also one thing I forgot to say, you have to go down to the Nakshatra level, okay? So that means if a planet whose Mahadasha is running is sitting in the Nakshatra Lords of the 2nd, 7th, 11th, that is even better, okay? For my life or the Lords of the 5th and the 9th, okay? Thank you very much for your patience and if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel below and if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him even if you have a exalted or a debilitated or a afflicted or a combust venus <laughs> all right thank you very much